I'll see you later on. You are looking live at the famed Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, starting to fill up now on a glorious Saturday afternoon. Terry Donahue and the UCLA Bruins play their home games here on this famous surface. And today, his former defensive coordinator, Dick Tomey, brings in the Wildcats of Arizona from down Tucson way. An important Pac-10 meeting between UCLA and Arizona coming your way on ABC. Here in Pasadena, the weather could not be finer. And the Rose Bowl today, with a good conference matchup between Arizona and UCLA, the Wildcats in their traveling white pouring on to the floor of this vast arena. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. So we hit October. That means the conference races will get into full swing. Ordinarily, the standing's not important. But already in the Pac-10, it tells a big story. UCLA twice has been embarrassed on network television. Non-conference losses to Oklahoma and Michigan in the conference. Twice they've come from behind on the road. 3-0, and and they'd be gunning for Pasadena on January 1st. Arizona upset at home again by California. They cannot afford a second loss this early in the conference race. Dick Vermeil, I got to tell everybody, I've never worked with an analyst who knows the two coaches as well. They both worked for you. They were on your staff here at oh, UCLA. Yeah. Both outstanding coaches, both outstanding technicians, both great recruiters, fine motivators. They made me look pretty smart. You know, different personalities with these two teams, though. Well, Arizona has been a fast starting team, both offensively and defensively, and then they sort of lulled in the second quarter. UCLA, in contrast, has been a come-from-behind team in their wins. I think the team that wins today is the team that's going to play well through all four quarters. Hey, you're on a roll. You like Oregon against BYU. Who you like at this one? <laughs> I, I love both those guys. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Coming up now, it's going to be UCLA and Arizona. Back with the kickoff in a moment. ABC's College Football. Brought to you by today's Chevrolet who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. By Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. By the employee owners of Avis. We're trying harder than ever. And by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco. It's like buying time. On every trip you take in a Chevrolet, Hundreds of hours and millions of dollars have been spent to help make it a safer one. In fact, there are more MDs and PhDs working for your safety than any other car company in the world. So if this looks like an uneventful trip, we worked hard to make it that way. Mile after mile, more people are winning with. The heartbeat of America. That's the Heard from an old student. Mm. Remember Brian McKenna? Smart kid. Good ball player. Great hands. Where's he going to college? He's not. Oh, too bad. Studying aviation electronics. But you said in the Navy. Then college. The Navy College Fund and Montgomery GI Bill. Over $25,000 for your college education. You and the Navy. Like I said, smart kid. Full speed ahead. The saga of the coaches. It's like a soap opera. Mark Jones, have you figured out the relationship between my analyst and all these coaches? Brent, man, you talk about puzzles. This is a huge one, this coaching fraternity. You know, it all started off with Tommy Prothrow, the head coach at UCLA in the late 1960s. He had Dick Vermeil and Pepper Rogers as an assistant coach. Terry Donahue was a walk-on player on that team. Anyway, Pepper Rogers took off to Kansas, and he took Donahue with him to be an assistant coach, and they hooked up there with... Who else but, hey, Dick Tomey. Dick Tomey got there as a result of being a Davidson working under Homer Smith, who fired him a couple of years later. More on that in a second. Pepper Rogers head back to UCLA as head coach. He takes with him Donahue, Tomey. They hire Homer Smith on the recommendation of, who else but, 
Tomey, the guy who got canned by Smith. Confused? Let's keep going. Vermeil then takes over, our guy up in the booth there. He has Donahue and Tomey as his assistant coaches. And then Dick Lees take the big cash in the NFL. Donahue takes over. He keeps Tomey as his assistant. Tomey says, enough of this. He goes off to Hawaii, eventually ends up in, where was it, Arizona now? Yeah, that's right, okay. And if you thought the story was over, well, it's not, because Johnny Lynn and Mike Flores, both assistant coaches at Arizona, are former UCLA players. Brent, there's a test for you at halftime. Dick, I know you know the deal. <laughs> and big bucks in the NFL. Oh, yeah, What's the big... most you ever made with the Eagles as a head coach? I'm not going to disclose that because the IRS thinks something differently. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Costin will kick it off. Arizona, and they're traveling white. Won the flip and deferred, so they will take the ball to start the second half. Brian Brown, the all-time record holder for UCLA with kickoff returns, coming off a splendid Saturday night game against Washington State up in Pullman. What a day for college football in Los Angeles. Speaking of Washington State, they're probably going to enjoy part of this game, and tonight they'll play the Trojans of USC over the Coliseum. Great day to hit both these games. Weather couldn't be better, and we're underway with Arizona badly needing to get to 2-1 and one in the conference. Here is Brown now at the 8, 15, the 20, finds a crease and spins through out to the 28-yard line, and we get word from South Bend that Stanford has just punched in another touchdown. Here it'll be Tommy Maddox and the Bruins, the come-from-behind kid. This is his first start in the Rose Bowl. Brian Brown, the featured running back by Terry Donahue last Saturday night. The man to watch here. In that offensive line, Lance Zeno, one of the captains, he anchors it. They need some stability, need some work together. They need better run blocking as a unit. That's not from us, that's from the coaching staff. Basic eye formation for the Bruins. Brown steps outside to the right. Spins free, 40. 45 across midfield. The way that was supposed to go inside, the defense didn't contain it. He bounced outside. He shouldn't let that play bounce out. Now you'll note that he bounces outside. He starts inside on a lead play. He bounces out right there. Ty Parton couldn't make the play. Gets a block from the receiver down there. Makes a good move. Reverse pivots in and heads upfield for a good game. They've got to keep that guy inside on that type of running play. Dick UCLA into Arizona territory immediately. First and 10 at the Wildcats 49 yard line. Again, show basic eye. Tight end to the left. Smith coming back to the right side. And he was brought down by Zeno Alexander. Speaking of that defense, let's take a look now at how the Wildcats will line up. And there will be lots of substitutes along this front. Reggie Johnson brings a lot of speed into this game. You can see number 47 there as he moves away from the defensive huddle. The linebackers, Zeno Alexander made that stop just moments ago. And in the backfield, Daryl Lewis, number four, the man to watch. He is a blossoming superstar down in the desert. Second and long, Maddox's first pass, split backs, drops it off to Smith, the fullback. Smith with an opening, plunges for the first down for the Bruins. See, they're going to come with the screens and the draws early in the ball game because University of Arizona leads defensive sacks and sacking the offensive quarterback. You'll see a screen. Now follow the fullback at the left-hand corner of your screen. He'll set up inside. Now watch him release outside. There's the layoff screen pass. The wall forms out. He gets a kick out block. Tight part 99. Can't quite get there. Dick the Moores are the two wide receivers for the Bruins. Michael and Reggie. First and ten against the Arizona defense. They'll run the draw. He showed pass and his running back slips down at the 40-yard line. Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator for Arizona, told me that they've been winning by sacking the quarterback and taking the ball away. And to win today, he has to do the same thing. So I anticipate them using a lot of pressure defense coming after the quarterback, the young guy. Scott Miller brought the play in from the sideline. Backs are split again behind Maddox on this second and long. They're coming after him, Brent. This offensive line gives him time. Goes down the sideline to Moore incomplete inside the 10-yard line. And Lewis. Guess, and guess who they went after? They went after maybe the number one defensive back, defensive corner in the NFA. It'll be down to the right-hand corner of your screen. They're coming after him with what they call their bear cub defense. They get into it without substituting. 
He lays it up high into the outside, and as Brent said earlier, number four, Darrell Lewis, might very well be the finest cornerback in college football right now. You'd think they'd pick on the weaker guy, wouldn't you? Sean Wills now checks in into the shotgun. He sends his backs out. He's got plenty of time. from the shotgun formation, giving the quarterback a little bit more time. He gets the ball to the man outside of the slot formation. Good time, good pass protection, a square in pattern by Miller. He gets it. Now, this guy has been out. This is only his second ball game. He caught three passes last week. The first time he touched the ball last week, he went for 40 yards with a punt return, 47 yards. A very talented athlete, and they needed him in their attack. Todd Burden colliding. As the catch was made, fell away. That allowed Miller to break free, we noticed on that replay. Dalloriso adds the extra point quickly at 7-0. We'll come back and review it. Miller's great speed, his first touchdown of the year, and the Bruins strike first. Jim Fox. Ten battle as Southern Cal meets Stanford. It's ABC's college football next Saturday. Reggie Miller there. Or I should say Scott Miller with a 40-yard touchdown reception. And Dick, what's the story about the backup quarterback there with his hand? He jammed hey. his hand and is now in a cast, and they're going to their third quarterback, Bert Emanuel, if something happens to Tommy Gunn Maddox. Michael Bates electing to come out of the end zone. Dalawiso buried it on the kickoff. And Bates with great speed bringing it out. A look at that touchdown by Miller. To throw the ball down inside on a square end pattern coming like this, you need a throwing lane for the quarterback. You'll see that throwing lane appear. In the shotgun, good formation. Now watch the throwing lane, very clear lane. See, he has a nice shot of the square end pattern. There's Lewis, number four. They knock each other down. Here's a very fast, fine cornerback chasing him, showing how fast Scott Miller is. Beal bringing the Wildcats to the line of scrimmage, the basic wishbone formation at the 15-yard line. McGill to the 24-yard line, and Eric Turner makes his first stop of the game. You know, it's important to note that Paul Toffelmeyer, their fine offensive center, is starting. He hadn't been able to practice all week. He didn't play much last week. Art Greathouse also playing with an injury. There's Toffelmeyer, who anchors this line. They are huge over on the right side. I know that Dick Vermeil is going to be able to show you some interesting things. Second down and short. Now it is the eye bone look with the tight end switching over to Beal's right. Beal, a good option runner, can keep it. Elects to come to McGill, powering his way toward the first down for Arizona on their first possession. A look at the Bruin defense and some key stories here. Mike Shalinski returns after missing last week because of an injury. Now the linebackers, and here is the story. Roman Pfeiffer out because of an injury. Number 40 not playing in that setup. Arnold L.A., number 89, will play in his position. Matt Darby has returned, and he teams with Turner in that secondary. So the loss of Pfeiffer, Dick, how will that impact the Bruins defensively? Well, Pfeiffer is their fastest man in that front seven, and you like to have that speed against the option. It's going to hurt him. Now coach is first and ten. Arizona shows the eye with a slot to the left. And again, just a basic running game. That time it is McGill. And the Bruins with Shalinsky were ready. Shalinsky is from the University of Pittsburgh. He transferred to UCLA. He didn't play last week, as you've already said. He is probably, in my opinion, the most promising young defensive lineman that they have in their program. He'll be a dandy a couple years down the road. Dick Greathouse in and McGill out. What about Arizona's passing game? Well, they, they actually 
would rather run the football, and they want to throw when they want to throw, not when the defense dictates it. So it's important that they do run the ball efficiently on the early downs. Bringing Greathouse in motion. Beal to throw for the first time. Comes to the right side. His man was covered, and it is incomplete. He was going to Kyle Jan, and Carlton Gray had coverage for the Bruins. Beal is also, Beal have, you know, he's not the most accurate passer in the world, but here he's under duress. You'll see that hit right up coming from the top of the screen. Bam, he goes down. <laughs> Those hits are tough on you. Now that's Arn Lillet, number 89, doing that. The transfer from Notre Dame, number 89. It's nice so, to get those kind of transfers. Yes. Every transfer I got couldn't play. <laughs> Dennis Green got a pretty good up in Stanford. Yeah. Oklahoma, Milburn. Now it is third and ten for Arizona. Based for the passing situation. Let's see if the Bruins tee off. They've got him down at the 15-yard line. On with Twebby. On with Twebby, number 51, the nose guard. Getting his uh, second sack on the season on this play and a, and a critical one. Good field position for UCLA as they exchange punts. You'll see him appear right in the middle of your screen. He's the nose guard. He works right upfield. Not good blocking by the offensive left guard, Rick Warren, number 60. Josh Miller to punt it for Arizona. Hard to Miller that one. Downs it at midfield. The Bruins second possession after Miller's 35 yard punt. UCLA jumps ahead early. We're coming right back. Tutoring over on the sideline in front of their bench. Dick Vermeil, let's talk about Homer Smith, the UCLA offensive coordinator. He's up by seven right now as the Irish under fire from Stanford, 31-29. Tell me what Homer wants to do today with Maddox. Well, he wants to blend the Maddox offense with the Brown running offense that they used last week, the Brian Brown attack. If they can mold that together, they'll have a more balanced attack. That's what his goal is today. Maddox coming down the line with an option look. Now pitches to Brown who's across midfield. What about Maddox as a runner? Well, I don't think he's really true uh, option runner or anything like that. He's a gifted athlete, you know, and that is a change up and it forces the defense to go ahead and prepare for options. You'll see it's a reverse pivot by the quarterback. He fakes the fullback inside and he comes out. Actually, what this is is a delayed sweep. They're going to pitch that ball. They don't want him running it. Here comes Holt, number 37, the safety. See, he's got the pitch man. He didn't have the quarterback. You saw Wade, number 44, take the quarterback. Arizona showing a basic bear look up front. They come after the fullback and Smith squeezes inside the 45 yard line. You mentioned Kevin Smith. We saw him break that long run for a touchdown against Michigan a couple weeks ago. When this guy wakes up and finds out what kind of talent and realizes what he can do with a six foot four, 246 pound body that can run at the fullback position, He's going to be dynamite. We welcome those of you who have been enjoying Miami running up and down the field against Florida State. Here at UCLA, <laughs> leading Arizona 7-0. Tommy Maddox with a scoring strike to Miller. 7-0. Third down for Maddox and the Bruins. And Maddox will put it up. His offensive line gives him time. He goes deep. In. Complete, and they have gone to work on Mr. Lewis at that corner. Well, they said for every time they threw the ball short on Lewis, they were going to throw the ball deep. So far, they've thrown the ball deep twice, short zero. They're going to loosen him up. Here it is, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now you're looking at the guy that's supposed to be the best. He should have jammed him right there. Should have jammed him so he didn't have to get in the foot race. He's also a fine punt returner, and there's Reggie Moore reaching out for that ball. Courtney Kyler with his first punt for the Bruins. He's the heaviest punter I've seen this year. 250, is he? I want to go training with him. <laughs> Lewis with the fair catch at the 17-yard line. Now, first down after a 27-yard punt. You know, for a moment, when I when I saw him against the Washington State game, I thought, Gee, Paul McGuire got another year of eligibility <laughs> as he came back here. But he got that one. and. Uh, Lewis was forced to make a fair catch down inside the 20, and the uh, special teams coach has to like what Mr. Kyler did that time. Oh, yeah. You know, he's not 250, but he's 230, but you just don't run into many six foot one, 230 pound punters. 
Dick, let's talk about what Arizona might do to solve the defense. UCLA extremely aggressive in that last set. Well, they have to go ahead and get into the option run now. See, they didn't run the option before. They run the other type of their attack. There was the option play right there. And yep. they read it as a give, and they gave it. Was it basically the, the read? It wasn't the load that time. No, the load option is when they'll block the man that takes the quarterback, preferably the man that takes the quarterback, and predetermine what they're going to do with the football. That, I think, was the read option all the way, and the read told them to give the ball to the fullback, and uh, UCLA did a good job. Terry Fawn checking in with the play from the Arizona sideline. Second down and long, and if the Bruins can hold Arizona on first down, it'll make it so tough for an option team. A slot to Beal's left. He'll roll in that direction, and he'll take off. Beal. See that move? Great move by Beal out of bounds at the 36-yard line for the first down. What he does best of all, he runs 18 yards. And Bobby Beal, the defensive coordinator for UCLA, says, I worry more about this guy in the scramble situation than I do in the setup throwing situation. You'll see what I'm talking about. Fine athletic ability. Now watch as he moves. He keeps the center of gravity down. Now watch this move right here. Boom, right? Good vision. <laughs> I, you, would, you could fault the tackler. I wouldn't. I'd say you give the credit to the ball carrier. Nice move, Ron. Arizona out with the first down on its own 35-yard line. That eye bone. Bates the speed man. The offset back. Carries into the middle. And he is down at the 38-yard line. Hit hard that time by Meet Shaw, 53. When you mention the speed back, you're talking about the speed back. You're talking about the guy that won the Pac-10 Sprint Championship in the 100 meters and 200 meters and was on the championship relay team. This guy can literally fly. I think he was second in the NCAAs, was he not? Yes, he was. Or close. I don't know if he was that high. Was he? Exactly. I think he was in the top 10, but I will check that for you. We second just know down he can run. long for Beal and Arizona. The fullback behind the left side of the line, and that was Mario Hampton, brought down by Stacy Argo, number 41 for the Bruins. Stacy Argo loves to play football. He played in the Shrine uh, game in 1987. And I'll tell you, when you get a football player that's played in the North-South Shrine game in the L.A. Coliseum, you've got a kid that can play for you. They do a great job of selecting people, and it's got a great tradition. I think it's probably one of the finest Shrine games, all-star games played in the country. Third and three, look for the option. Put the pressure on the defense, but they show only one setback. They've thrown out of this formation before. Man in motion, and Veal instead hands off to the lone setback. Close to the first down, I believe he got it. This is the kind of offense that Coach Tomey likes to run. The offensive coordinator, Rip Shear, who coaches the quarterbacks and directs the offense, they like to control the football, and they've been very effective in the first quarter doing this. Referee Gordon Reese will bring the chain crew out and measure to see if Dick Tomey keeps it going here. That picture of Dick Tomey and you mentioning referee, I thought it was interesting, the comment he made about the officiating in the Pac-10. I have never heard a coach say that. He said he thinks the Pac-10 officials do as good a job of officiating the games as the coaches do coaching them. I never gave him that much credit. I know you did. <laughs> First and 10 for the Wildcats. Trying to extend this drive into Bruin territory here for the first time this afternoon. 6.15 to go in the opening quarter. UCLA 7, Arizona nothing. The other thing Rip Shear, the coordinator, wants to do is run the option out of a varied formation that UCLA has not seen it before. The Bruins, remember, are without their leading tackle. Number 40, Roman Pfeiffer. Bates in motion. And Beal. We'll it. It's it. wide open. Throws. He's there inside the 20 to the 14-yard line, Kyle Chan with a first down, Arizona. This is what happens to a defensive team when you can run the ball on those early downs. You can freeze those people with good play action fake. Now watch the fake inside. See, they got everybody tied up inside. In fact, they're trying to tackle the faking back. He comes off, and then Kyle Jan, number 81, goes down the seam. Here he is, laying it off right down the hole. That's a big play. Now, Kyle Jan is not the great sprinter type, but he's a big physical blocker, and he's a good football player. He, too, played in the Shrine game coming out of high school. Meets Shaw, shaken up on the play. Leaves. Goes off across the way. 
Must be out for at least one play as the trainers had to tend to him. Veal with information from the sideline brings it back to the Arizona huddle. Somebody was assigned to cover Kyle Jan. No question about that. What happened, the person assigned to cover him was looking into the backfield and read it as a run. That for Ronnie Veal, his longest completion of the year. 39 yards. Fake to the fullback. Beal pulling it down for the option inside the five-yard line before Eric Turner, 29, can bring him down. Arizona has been inside the 20-yard line 18 times in the four games prior to this one. They've scored 10 touchdowns, six field goals. That's not enough touchdowns, too many field goals. Here, they look like they're moving it down in there pretty good with that same option play. Meet Shaw returns for the Bruins. First and goal, Arizona. Great house. Just short of the end zone. It'll be second and goal. Great house is a bigger back in that backfield set at 5'10", 206 pounds. He's already graduated in May. He's in graduate school right now. His mom is a professor at Arizona State. His daddy set some records at Arizona State. He was a good football player, too. What's, what's that saying? The, tree never, the apple never falls too far from the tree? Exactly. But it fell away from Tempe, enough to help out Tucson. Second down and goal. Arizona blasting right straight ahead. Now the delayed signal for the touchdown. And Arizona only an extra point away from tying it up. So Ronald Field shaking his hand gets it into the end zone for Coach Tomey. The big thing here is for the offensive line to knock the defensive lineman down, get a good surge so he can go up over the top, and that's just what they did. Good job by Rick Warren, Paul Toffelmeyer, and Nick Finian Ganofo. So that much maligned passing game of Arizona sets up the tie and touchdown, and Costin adds the extra point. We go tied to commercial. We're coming right back to the Rose Bowl. UCLA 7, Arizona now 7. stop the option well see the defensive option many times you assign people to people so you end up man to man and when one person breaks down and defending a pass you get the big one many times they've had the opportunity for the big one already this year but they haven't thrown it complete this time he throws it complete costin putting the ball on the tee arizona seven ucla seven 420 to go here in the opening quarter with mark jones and dick vermeil i'm brent musburger nice to have you along They've got to do a good job of covering on this guy. That's a return type ball. From the five. 15. Opening. Spinning move again to the 27. All right, we have mentioned Roman Pfeiffer not playing because of an injury. He's down with our Mark Jones, so let's go to Mark. Yeah, you know, they nickname him Zoo. That's another story, but Roman, it's been a long time since uh, you've been injured and uh, missed a game. Kind of tough to watch from the sidelines. Right, uh, but I'm trying to bump the team up, give them some inspiration from the sideline, and uh, hopefully I'll be back next week. Thanks a lot for joining us, Roman. Good All luck right. to you. Okay. What that hat say? I couldn't read. Charlotte Hornets, huh? Got a lot of basketball talent on this UCLA football team. Tommy Maddox coming out of Texas High School was a splendid point guard as well as a baseball player. Now off a of play fake. Throws back over the middle. Incomplete. Was it a fumble? No, no incomplete, incomplete pass. Should have caught it, shouldn't he, coach? Bobby Rowland. Yeah, well, see, he stood there and waited for the ball to come to him rather than moving to the ball. Good play action. Good hole in the zone coverage right there. But good tackling by Bobby Rowland, number five. He really went after him. Bobby's an academic All-American coming out of junior college, a smart football player as well. Yeah, Maddox is one of those young men. You just roll out a ball and he'll pick it up and try to play the game. Here the celebrated young quarterback for the Bruins. Handing off to Ooh. Smith, his fullback. And we asked Maddox about what he learned playing basketball and how that helps him as a football player. Here's what he had to say. 
I think more importantly, you can take things that you learn in basketball because, you know, once you get past your first set of receivers, it's a lot like basketball because the receivers have time to get open and work on one defender, you know. And so you can take a lot of, you know, trying to pass off a basketball player as you can trying to pass off a defensive player. So I think that's the most comparison in the two sports. He'll try to get an advantage this time out of the shotgun. La Chapelle, very sure-handed receiver, goes in motion, fakes the inside handoff, and Got fires it. Oh, no, it was dropped at the 45-yard line. The ball probably should have been intercepted by Burton, but he just couldn't hold well, on. They came after him. You'll see number 47 on the right side of your screen. That's Reggie Johnson. He's coming on a stunt right up inside. They go to pick him up. He goes over the top of the stunt, keeps coming, gets pressure on him. That should have been intercepted right there. Todd Burton just couldn't hang on. Hey, Dick, here comes your favorite punter. Courtney <laughs> Kyler. You bet. I think he trains in the cafeteria. <laughs> I'm going with him. Watch I'm him hit a 65-yard. He's mentally marked down, regardless of what he hits. Lewis at the 35, down at the 40. But remember, back at the line of scrimmage, we had a penalty flag thrown. You know, the young quarterback like Maddox is going to throw some balls like that. He threw a couple last week, and they're not always intercepted, and you're thankful that they're not. But the young guys will sometimes throw under pressure the poor ball. And, and that's what's sometimes more important to pressure a quarterback than to sack him because you give him the opportunity to throw the ball under duress, and you have the chance of intercepting it. Dick, we saw a shot of Coach Tomey over there on his sideline as they get this penalty. It'll sort it out. So Arizona will take the ball. Tomey will this. take the ball. What what kind of what kind of a coach is Tomey? How, his personality. How does it apply to Arizona? A lot of folks don't know much about him. Well, he's one of these guys that's not a high guy, a low guy. He's just the opposite of me. He has an even keel guy, an intense coach on the field, a great teacher and a super individual player motivator. I have never heard him say, if a coach a player or know of a player that he coached, that he couldn't find something good to say about the guy. I formation for Arizona. 7-7. Seven, seven. UCLA scoring first, and the Wildcats tying it up. They run McGill to the 45-yard line on first down. McGill has had some good running days. You know, he's rushed for 1,116 yards in his career. Minder on Monday night, John Elway. Another one of those great Stanford quarterbacks as we follow the progress of Stanford. Up against the Cleveland Browns, a rematch of the AFC Championship. Who are you liking that one, Coach? Well, you have to go with Denver because Cleveland's, you know, is off to a slow start, but Cleveland always plays them well. They end up losing in the championship games to them. Second down, the fullback. Great run for a first down. Ho! Oh, Stanford 36, Notre Dame 31, fourth quarter. Let's see, Notre Dame is losing. Florida State is losing. Michigan, if they come up big today, could jump all the way to number one. And if you talk to the UCLA coaches, they will tell you that that offensive line of Michigan's is one of the finest that they have ever gone up against. There's no question about that. It's one of the better I've ever seen in college. Beal, straight back. Complete to the Bruins' 42-yard line. And it was to Richard Griffith, the tight end. You can see what they're doing. They are changing the tendency of wanting to run on first down. Here they come with a play-action pass. They're going to fake the run, just a tight, deep uh, Fake to the tailback. He's running a tight end crossing pattern to Griffin right there. Good tackle and everything else. No help underneath because the linebackers were defending the run. Mike Skrydnik, the hard-working fullback. Disconnect read. Belts right to the 36-yard line. What do you mean by a disconnect read? Well, the defensive tackle didn't close on the option block hard enough. Let me show you here from the end zone if I can see this here. From the end zone. Now, this lineman here should close that hand off. He didn't, see, and they blocked down like that. Here it goes, see, he got up underneath it. He should close tighter. If he doesn't close tighter, they're going to give the ball to the fullback. If I hang around you long enough, I may learn something. Hey, I learn something from you every day. First and 10 for Arizona. 
The ball at the Bruins, 37-yard line. Field defense buried that time. Back at the 40-yard line, a loss of three yards. Shalinsky. That's Mike Shalinsky from the top of your screen. He stops outside. Now, obviously, see, that was a load option. That was predetermined. They weren't reading it. Defense guessed well. Good call by Bobby Fields, the coordinator. If he'd had the true option, he would have handed that ball off against that defense, and the fullback would have been running up in there clean. What do you think? They'll guess pass here. Five men. They press the wide receivers. And Beal will and swing the it to his running back here on the sideline. Number 38, Billy Johnson, taken out by Eric Turner, number 29. That was a screen pass. Now, you don't see many screen passes coming out of the backfield in a wishbone-type attack. He swings out of the backfield, and the key to this play is the full the tackle coming out there. You'll see he's back there. Now, watch him get the tackle out there in front of the swing back. Here, you'll see him appear right there on the screen. Did a nice job opening that lane. Third and four. Beal complaining about something to the referee. And that was he was pointing at the game clock as the time was running out on the first quarter. So we've come to the end. A good first quarter. UCLA seven, Arizona seven, and driving. Chevrolet introduces the.